Thank you, Senator Hoven. Uh, Ms. So, we will now uh, swear you in. Uh, please rise and raise your right hand. Do you swall, excuse me, do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you give today shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? Thank you. Please be seated. I want to remind you that your full written testimony will be made part of the official hearing record. Please keep your statement to no more than five minutes so that members have time for questions. Ms. So, uh, please proceed with your testimony. Thank you, uh, Chairman Schultz and Ranking Member Murkowski. Of course, she's not here today, and members of the committee. Thank you for, the, for considering my nomination to be the Director of the Indian Health Service. I am honored by President Biden's decision to nominate me for this role, and if confirmed, I look forward to serving American Indians and Alaska Natives under his leadership and Secretary Becerra's. Before I begin my testimony, I would like to properly introduce myself to my family and relatives in Navajo. I would also like to recognize and thank my family seated behind me today is my sister Dolores So Robinson, her husband Kenneth Robinson, my niece Major Ashley Najoni Robinson, United States Marine Corps, my son Edward Lyons Jr., and my partner of more than 30 years, Mr. Corey Winnie. And watching virtually is my mother Marjorie So, my brother Lawrence So, and my children Holly, Clayton, and Roberta, as well as members of my extended family, relatives, and friends. With me in spirit includes my father, the late Reverend Alvin So, my brothers Ben, Willard, Alvin Jr., Eldon, and my sister Linda. Without their love and support, I would not be here today. My own father's service as a proud but quiet Korean War veteran continues to inspire me to serve at the IHS, and if confirmed, I would be honored to continue this public service. I have almost four, four decades of professional experience working at all levels of the Indian Health Service. I also have decades of lived experience as a member of the Navajo Nation who has had to navigate the services provided by the agency for myself, family, and friends. Because of both my professional and personal experiences, I understand how patient experience the system and where we need to focus to improve patient ex experience and health outcomes. If confirmed as a director of the Indian Health Service, I will work to maximize the agency resources to improve the physical, mental, social, and spiritual health and well-being of all American Indians and Alaska Natives served by the agency. This is particularly important as we are more than two years into a pandemic that has disproportionately affected Indian country. Currently, I am the director of the Navajo area, the largest regional area in IHS, where I'm responsible for managing more than 4,000 employees and leading a budget of nearly one billion. When I travel across the region to the different IHS facilities, I am reminded of the many health disparities facing American Indians and Alaska Natives. Health disparities that in many cases were made worse by COVID-19. For example, Sadly today, too many Navajo families still do not have access to running water in their homes. Access to clean, safe drinking water is essential to the health and well-being of our people. Throughout my career at Indian Health Service, I have worked to improve the agency to better meet the needs of the people we serve. This was most evident throughout the pandemic where I saw and was part of a true partnership with the Navajo Nation, the San Juan Paiute tribes, the local, state, federal, and private partners to collectively combat COVID-19. If confirmed as the director of the Indian Health Service, I will prioritize the following. First, strengthen and streamline IHS business operations to better support the delivery of healthcare by creating a more unified healthcare system that delivers the highest quality of care. Second, developing systems that improve accountability, transparency, and patient safety. And third, addressing the workforce needs and challenges to provide quality and safe care. We cannot achieve any of this without 
strong partnerships and communication with our tribal partners. As a result of my personal and professional experiences, I have a deep appreciation for tribes and the needs of their communities. Each tribe has unique needs, and those needs cannot be met if I do not understand them. The health care at the IHS is critical for those we serve. I understand this not just because I work there, because my family relies on IHS, my friends rely on IHS, and I rely on IHS. I look forward to continue to be a voice for tribal communities during these unprecedented times, as well as continue the transformative work that is needed to meet the healthcare needs. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. I look forward to answering your questions.